Welcome to this edition of the Clinical Works Podcast. I'm Adam Salati. In times of crisis, we may be more willing than usual to look to new solutions in order to weather the storm in front of us. But one practice has found that existing tools and workflows can be reinvented in order to thrive during this uncertain period. Here to speak with us about how his practice found new ways to employ technology is David Updegraft, Administrator and Director of Strategy at Innova Primary Care. David, thanks so much for taking your time to be here today. Thank you, Adam. Tell us about Innova Primary Care uh, and what makes you unique. Absolutely. Innova is a, a relatively small primary care practice, independent, seven providers. We serve approximately 5,000 patients in our community here in Huntsville, Alabama. We are an advanced primary care clinic. We have nurse practitioners and physicians that share the care of our team. And uh, we seek to have trusted relationships with our patients and to deliver renewal in primary care hence our name, Anova, coming from the Latin word meaning renew. Um, so you are using things like online booking, telehealth, credit card on file, and chronic care management, to name a few, um, all previously. Um, and, and those things, the way that you've used those things have changed. I think that's very interesting. So let's start with online booking. Uh, you were using online appointment booking uh, uh, through, you know, Hilo uh, before the pandemic. What ability, what, what impact has that had on your ability to adapt to these times? It's been a tremendous asset. Uh, you know, going through in the past, we've been piloting that program for years. We've tried different methods of setting it up. Uh, but when we got into the middle of the uh, first acceleration of the pandemic in our community. We had staff that was furloughed, we had providers at home, we had patients that were scared to come out into the community, and the ability for them to book those appointments directly was really uh, a great efficiency in being able to continue to serve during that time, specifically being able to publish those appointments as a same-day schedule using a resource as opposed to just having provider names uh, was very helpful. It was also helpful that some of our providers were doing telehealth only, and we were able to update their captions in the Hilo telehealth system to indicate that they're telehealth only. So our patients could actually go on and book the appointment knowing what kind of appointment they would get. So David, how were you able to set up your schedules in order to make online appointment booking simple for both patients and your providers? Well, because we are a patient center medical home, it's been important that we have the ability to provide same-day appointments to all of our patients. It's critical for the patient's trusted relationship with us, as well as our quality measures and, and keeping them engaged with us as their clinic. So what we've done is add a resource in eClinical Works after uh, the eClinical Works team enhanced Hilo to be able to actually publish resource availability. We have our different providers rotate through the same-day appointment schedule resource. So when a patient goes on to book an appointment, it's very clear they're not trying to book it with one provider or another. It's the same day appointment schedule, and they know that's what they want, and that's what they request their appointments through. Now, I know a lot of practices are sometimes hesitant to start with online appointment booking. Um, how did you get your patients to adopt online appointment booking so easily? That's true. I have heard some hesitancy from some on that, but such a tremendous efficiency once your patients are engaged with it. And it's a huge part of our practice that we adopt new technology and we expect our patients to as well. So we have a very high portal adoption rate here. To become a new patient, you have to log in and use your portal and complete your medical history through that. So our patients are very used to going to our website to access their portal already. We just added an additional button there that says book an appointment book a telehealth appointment that had those providers that were specifically providing telehealth, a place to download the app, which eClinical Works has provided a landing page where you can download the app, uh, Android or iPhone, and our patients saw it there. The other thing we did was to actually mail out a flyer to everybody announcing the availability of telehealth, because that's a big shift that happened really quickly. So we put a flyer in their mailboxes uh, for all of our patients to get that message across, and then seeing it on the website and seeing that flyer together has resulted in some days we come in and literally a third of our same day appointments are already booked through Hilo Open Access. And that's just incredible to have that done before we even open the office. Now, most practices think of telehealth as a way to provide flexibility for patients. 
But Innova found a way to apply that same tool to support your own staff. What's the story there? Yeah, there was a lot of opportunity for us to actually more effectively work as a clinic with staff furloughed using Hilo Open Access. And also we had two providers that were actually pregnant at the time, very concerned about the risk to their uh, children. And so they were exclusively working from home. And the ability to shift them into telehealth only, to have them not at all exposed to any of the COVID cases we were swabbing and seeing here in the clinic, gave them a great peace of mind, made them feel like they were really valued and protected by, by our clinic, and had no impact whatsoever on their ability to care for patients, since we had a huge number of patients that wanted to do telehealth. And so they shifted to doing that exclusively. Our providers that were still here in the clinic did telehealth as well, but would also do in-person visits. So David, what do you think contributed to your success in transferring all these patient visits to telehealth? Well, it's it's been a journey, really. Um, we've long had a focus on technology in our clinic as a way to improve our efficiency. Anyone in primary care knows how crippling phone messages are and the constant phone calls and phones have driven us crazy. So we've been working for years to get a high adoption level on our patient portal and encourage and drive patients to communicate with us through their portal, request refills, ask questions, et cetera, as opposed to those phone calls. Really, some of that inspiration came from Trillium uh, Primary Care that we had listened to present at uh, some of the national user conferences for me, Clinical Works. And so we carried a lot of that same philosophy here to Innova of patients, they cannot become patients here unless they log in to their portal after we've activated and they have to pre-register using the process that eClinical has for pre-registration. Then we have a new patient coordinator that actually communicates with them by email for them to initiate their portal login, complete their medical history. There is no appointment booking that's going to occur until all those steps have been completed. And you know, it took us years to, to get that process in place and to enforce it. But now that it is, it made it very simple to transition to telehealth because we have a huge high adoption rate on our uh, portal. And so patients were already on there communicating with us anyway. But let's ask this question too. You know, what about the demographics of your population? I mean, are you just lucky to have a young set of patients that are very receptive to technology? What can you tell us about that? They're certainly not all young. Uh, 40% of our patients are over 50 years old, and we do have a community that's comfortable with technology, but we also have farmers and, and people that may not have uh, regular interaction with uh, internet and high-speed high media. So the thing has not been a problem. We, we allow them to have proxies. If they don't have internet, they can have a child or a grandchild in some cases that actually can sign up and handle the portal for them. Uh, but that's how we're able to serve effectively is by use of the portal. How did you employ the credit card on file feature to make sure that your copays were being collected efficiently? That was a really interesting uh, opportunity that eClinical Works allowed us to have was utilizing that feature with the telehealth rollout. So we began to encounter patients we were scheduling for two or three weeks out or two or three months out in some cases. And it's always our policy to collect the copay before the encounter. Well, all of a sudden, when you're trying to collect a copay at the time that you schedule for an appointment that's happening in a couple of weeks, some of our patients are like, whoa, whoa, I don't want to pay that copay now. How about you call me back the day of? Well, that's a huge roadblock in our workflow process. So we enabled the copay collection credit card on file functionality for that visit. And we say, no problem, Mr. Smith. We'll just get your card, put it on file, and it'll be charged the day of the appointment. And that then took away that excuse. And in some cases, they'd be, oh, fine, I'll just pay it now. And in others, they would let us put the card on file. And we run that uh, report and uh, process those cards when their appointment actually happens, days, weeks, or months later. Now, has your emphasis on CCM changed as a result of the pandemic? And has it played a role in keeping your practice healthy? Absolutely. Uh, during the time that there was the most decrease in visits, we pivoted rapidly to utilizing more CCM. We've been running that program really thanks to eClinical Works for years now. The module that was introduced so early made it possible for us to adopt that even as a small clinic. And the reality is we have about 400 CCM patients. On any given month, we touch 150 of them. But this gave us a huge opportunity with those patients being some of the most vulnerable in this time to pivot our providers uh, to actually contacting the whole panel all 400 as opposed to just 150 that had urgent needs in that particular month and communicating and providing them some key information about how to stay safe. That was a real 
assist us, of course, to the revenue bottom line, but it also, again, strengthened our relationship with those patients because they were very cared about and very grateful for our outreach uh, in the middle of what was a very frightening time for many of them. Uh, but David, I wanted to uh, just take a, take time to thank you so much for, for your time here today. Um, I think you've provided a lot of great insight and information into how practices can use these tools in new and more effective ways to stay resilient and keep operating at these, at these times. Thank you so much. Thank you, Adam. Well, if you'd like to check out any of our other eClinical Works podcast episodes, those are available on iTunes, YouTube, and my.eclinicalworks.com. And if you'd like any more information about any of the solutions that David mentioned here today, you can check out my.eclinicalworks.com, where we've got videos and documents and even eClinical Works University to help you get started with a lot of those tools. And of course, you can reach out to your strategic account manager as well at any time. For the Clinical Works Podcast, I'm Adam Salati, and thanks for watching.